Yeah. Sorry, oh, yes, really? I couldn't do it because I had some work to be done for today. Okay. Uh, I'll do it tonight. Uh, Ramya, are you recording? Have you started the recording? No, I'm not. It says recording, yeah. but red button yeah, is Yeah, I have on. started. I have oh, started, yeah. and I have to also send yesterday's recording. I'll do it uh, in few minutes. Okay, okay, no worries. Okay, so um, so today's uh, discussion. So, so yesterday we talked about uh, how to free the voice, how to remove obstructions in the you know the passage from the, the vocal cords out through our mouth and nose. And to also try and um, amplify the voice using all the resonances in our um, head. So today we're going to build on that and actually get closer to the business of singing, right? Until now we've been making, making funny sounds. Um, now we're going to actually start to uh, make some of the sounds that actually constitute singing. So, uh, the way I have structured this workshop is I have tried to start with the biggest problems that we as singers, especially South Indian singers face, and then that move progressively to second order problems. So the biggest problem as I saw it was breath control, which you did the first day. Second is the improper use of voice. The third, which you'll deal with today is improper enunciation. So we don't make the sounds the way we should. And that actually sabotages our own singing. So we aim to do well, of course, we have all the greatest intentions, but we fail in the execution because we don't realize that as we are delivering the sound, we are doing something, we are closing our mouths, we are mispronouncing the word. Uh, and, and, and the net effect is in our head, we are singing beautifully. But to the listener, they're hearing something else. So the first important difference between speaking and singing comes about today. So if you're just to want to learn to speak, then most of the things that you've done yesterday, the day before, are sort of enough. But if you want to get into more advanced stuff like singing or theater, where you have to go up and down, you have to be more expressive in their voice, then you need to do these extra things that we'll do today, tomorrow, and the day after. So what are those extra things? First thing you have to know, you may not, you may not know this, uh, but the way we sound to ourselves is very different from the way we sound to other people. And the reason is that our ears hear a lot more than what comes out of our mouth, right? Some of the vibrations are transmitted to our ears internally directly from our voice cords to uh, the ears. So we hear ourselves as some rich sound with lots of harmonics, but only some fraction of that is actually heard by everybody around us. So part of the job of a singer is to reduce the difference. It will never go away. It will not be completely equal, but we can work to make it less and less so that what you hear and what others hear are sort of similar. Okay, so today we're going to look at some of those things that will make that happen. So that even when you're singing, what you think you're singing and what others actually hear are you know, close. And here comes the first uh, thing that you have to do, all singers have to do. That is, you have to record yourself. You should always record yourself and listen to it. Because only then you will know what other people are hearing. Right? So you cannot trust your own uh, ear while you are singing to know what other people are hearing. So, of course, recording devices have their limitations. So what you hear from a tape, a tape holder, what you hear from your uh, you know, iPod or from your um, recording device is still a limited... Um, Sort of facsimile of what you actually sang, what or what other people will hear. It does cut off some of the frequencies, but nevertheless, it's a more accurate representation of what other people are hearing. And so you should constantly record yourself, listen to yourself, and then make corrections accordingly. Right? So that is the, the tip of the day for you. So uh, the uh, 
the most important thing device today for a musician, a singer especially, is a recording device. So, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, now we are going into uh, start with yesterday's uh, exercise, and then we are going to segue from that into how to sing vowels and uh, consonants properly. So that will be the task of today. And then tomorrow we will build on that to talk about more advanced stuff like how to increase your range, how to, um, as somebody asked, how to sing across what I call registration so that you can sing head voice, chest voice, uh, all that smoothly. And then from there we'll go on to more, even more advanced things like uh, how to sweeten your voice, how to modulate your voice. Somebody asked the question, okay, how can I put emotion into my voice, right? Arpana asked that at the beginning. So we'll talk about that because you cannot do all that effectively until you do all these things first. Okay, so uh, let's start today. Um, if you remember the, the last exercise we did yesterday, which is also the, the best exercise for what we're going to do today, is the mm sound, right? If you remember, you have to uh, make that nasal sound. And so we're going to do that today as a warm up to start off the, uh, the workshop later. Okay, so let me uh, start it off. I will do it once and then you can all do it. And, uh, and I won't make you unmute. You can just do it so that I don't want to embarrass you. All right, let me get my thing here, yeah. So the, the, um, the way the exercise goes is, for count of four, stop, count of four, stop, count of four, stop. I, we can go for a very long time. I'm just going to do it in a set of three. So breathe, do the mm sound, hold for a count of one. Uh, so, so sing the mm sound for a count of four, stop for a count of one, sing for a count of four again, stop for a count of one, Sing for a count of four. Stop. Another inhale. Do this again. We'll do it three times. So all of you can do that on your own. I don't want to um, unmute you because then you, you can all sing it here, whatever pitch you are comfortable with. Okay? All right. Let's start. So are there, so, three, are there three verses or four verses? Yes. So three verses. So, okay. mm, mm, mm. Okay. And take a breath and then do it again. Okay. And remember all the other things that I, I don't need to tell you again. Um, you have to use the, the belly breathing, shoulders down, posture upright, le head level. So one of the problems with the zoom is that sometimes you have to look down. I have to look down uh, mm -hmm. you, and it's not necessarily a good thing. But I'm sufficiently far away that it's not that much of an angle. On the last day, I will elevate it. And I'll show you what it looks like to, to sing as a performer. Okay, right. So I'll get started on my side. Now you can all do it yourself. Are you guys doing it or are you just looking at me? Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll be forced to make you guys go off mute and then show it to me. So, your choice. Let me know. So when you go off mute, I'll know that you're done. Okay. All right. So Aryaman, I noticed, I don't know if it's because your screen is positioned that way. I noticed that you look up, looking up. For looking purpose, okay, but 
for singing, I want you to keep your head level, okay? Not down, not up, just straight. Yes? If you want, you can stare into the distance and sing. I don't care. Okay. So, so now starts the, the, uh, the vowels exercise. So the first thing that, um, let me make sure that I get this set up properly. Yeah. Um, the first thing that uh, we'll do is again, starting off from yesterday, we'll go in the ah, right? In the ah. So the, the point is that you're going to sing the vowel ah. That is the purpose of the vowel ah. But the ing will help us position our throats in the right way to sing the vowel. Okay? So this can be done in one of two ways. We have done the other way also yesterday, which is to start with the yawn. You can start with the yawn. Yawn is also another excellent way. The difference between the yawn start and the ing start is that in the yawn start, you relax your voice. It's a very essential thing. The ing starts. So what does ing do? So this is one of the things that we will discuss today in some detail, is what is called positioning of the voice. So in Western terms, there are many uh, names for different kinds of voices. The same person can sing in at least three different voices, um, or three different colors, let's just say, not different voices. There's a dark color, which I, I think I, I showed yesterday, just to sing at the, from with what is called the lowered larynx. So uh, if you sing uh, like this, Oh, that's called a dark one. So this, your voice is coming mostly from the back of your throat. Then there is the bright voice, which is very nasal. So the more nasal it is, the brighter it is considered. So, eh, ah, same pitch, but different voice. Right? This is called a bright voice or a forward voice. So I don't like the word forward because it's confusing. Just call it bright. And then there is a middle voice, which is uh, so this is between forward and dark. So, so I'll, I'll show you again. Uh, uh, uh. So I'm, I'm exaggerating. It's the same pitch, but sung at different uh, colors. And you can all do it. There's no magic to it. There's no mystery to it. You just have to uh, learn and experiment with your voice, and you'll all learn to do it. So it turns out that in Carnatic music, almost all uh, singers use a forward voice, right? a very, very bright voice. So most of us sing from the front of our uh, you know, facial uh, resonance. Whereas in uh, film singing, uh, it's sort of forward uh, or bright to middle voice. And then in Western music, in um, uh, Opera, for example, they sing, oh, 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 like that. So that's the back voice, the dark voice. So we don't use that much in Indian singing, but there's no reason you cannot do it. You know, it's fine. Uh, you can sing a Karnatic Riti in a dark voice, and MD Ramanathan did that, uh, and people appreciated it. So it's okay. It's a, it's a choice, but culturally, we've always preferred a, a sort of brighter sounding voice. Okay, now within that, we're going to now. I am going to aim to teach you this middle voice, right? not too bright, not too dark, so that then you have the option to brighten it or darken it. So now I'm going to teach you a set of exercises to tap into that middle voice. And that middle voice is where this in exercise comes in. So the way we go into the middle voice is go. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'll, I'll show you the same thing just so that you know what I'm talking about by altering the color of this. So I can do this also. That's a bright version or a, a forward version. That's a darker version. We can make it even darker, but you know, you get the point. So we are going to try and look for the golden mean in the middle. So, so I'm going to ask all of you to try this. Before I unmute you, I, I hope you have some 
the third pitch that you already selected, so you're not searching for it. But for at that pitch, I want all of you to do this. Yeah, you got it? Okay, so now we're going to combine this inga sound with some other sounds to make this vowel shape really solid. So the, the most basic vowel that is easiest to do, but the, also the one we screw up the most, is the ah sound. Right? So the, the ingo is only the sort of the precursor to set up the ah vowel. So what we want is ah. But when you sing the ah, you should feel that the back of your throat is open like you did yesterday. That you're not um, uh, you know, constrained in any way, you're not constricting anything. The nice thing about the ah is that there is no need to constrain. There's no need to hinder. There's no need to shape. It is the basic way in which our mouths open and the sound comes out. So, again, so I want all of you to try this. So do the ah. Now we're going to uh, prolong the ah, but without singing the in. So we're going to sing, you're sing, going to sing the in in your mind. You're going to make like you're going to sing an in, and but sing only the ah. So like this. Uh, like that. So this is the first step to making the vowel ah. Okay, so I'm, you know, in a short while, I'm going to get to a point where we will try this exercise. But these, there are, I'm combine, I'm going to combine two exercises so that we save time. I have a lot of exercises for you today. So uh, the second exercise we're going to do is the ma sound. And it, it goes like this. So there's no difference between the, the inga and the ma sound. It's just that because our... Uh, mouth starts in a different position, I want you to observe how it affects the back of your mouth. Ultimately, in both cases, you're singing ah, but somehow you'll discover that singing the different consonant, in versus m, will change the rest of your, um, your uh, vocal passage. So then this, the, for comparison, we're going to sing mm -ah versus mm -ah. So we're going to do this. Mm -ah. Okay, so one more time. Mm -ah. Okay, so now I'm going to start going around to see how you guys do. Let me change how I use this. Okay, uh, Arpana, can you start us off? I want you to sing, mm -hmm. but sing it in your your pitch, whatever uh, note you want. Inga followed by, close your mouth, but nothing else should move. Inga, ma, okay. Inga, Can you sing, uh, come closer to the mic? I'm not able to hear you very well. Again? Okay. So, I don't, I couldn't hear the transition, but when you go from the nga to the m, I don't want anything else to change. So I want to hear exactly the same a. Nga, ma. The a should be same in both. So try again. Very good. Okay, Ariman. Sorry, you were cutting out a little bit. So do it again, please. Do the ing first. Mm. 
Come closer to the camera. Yeah, do it again. Okay, Shankar. No, no, mal to. So I can share your, your clip, I assume you're doing it. Uh, so for the ma, it's exactly like the hum. Your clip should just touch to make the ma sound, then let go. Ma, okay? So, ma, ma, like that. One more time. There you go, okay, very good. Ramya? Okay, so I'm hearing a lot of air in your voice. Now I don't know whether it's just the mic that is doing that. So when you do the ing, you want to really uh, hit hard on the ing sound so that ing so that it comes through mostly through your nose. Mm, that's what we did yesterday. Nda, so nda. Very good. I want the M to, to enunciate properly. Mma. So, Mma. Okay. okay. So, next. So, now that you know what the Ma sounds like, Ma is one of the very basic sounds that we need to learn to sing. Both the M sound and the A sound. So, all of us in the beginning have to struggle with the A. And to some extent, you guys are. So I now show you how to correct that. So the R sound is essentially is created by a jaw falling down, right? But what happens is that we don't allow gravity to take hold of the jaw. We try to hold it up, right? We go instead of singing, ah, you do. Uh, you hear the difference? So with 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 singing properly, it is. Uh, not singing properly, uh, it sounds like an uh to me at least, and that's what we predominantly sing in the name of ah. We're singing uh as ah, but we should be opening our mouth more vertically. But what happens is, uh, in, especially in Indian singing, a lot of what is called lateral spreading happens. Our lips widen like this as we sing, but our jaws don't drop. So the most important uh, thing that, that we decided, you know, we, we discussed last yesterday, the relaxation, is that this jaw needs to relax. So I want you guys to put your hands up into your, uh, against your cheeks like this, right? And rub this part of your, uh, where the, the two jaws meet, right? where the joint is. Okay? This needs to really relax and we uh, tend to clench that jaw. So you bite or you tense up or we sometimes we do it involuntarily. Okay. Rub this part and put your cheeks, your hands against that, like that, and make sure that you feel that relaxed jaw muscle. Open your mouth a little bit so you can see that your hands will like, go in a little bit because the jaw is open. Now sing. That is how it's supposed to sound, but without the hands. Okay, again. Right. So 
now you now can you tell do you feel the difference between the way you are seeing R before and the way you see when you with your hands up here? So the way you see with your hands up here is the correct way. This is how the R is supposed to be. Okay, when you sing it like this, your voice will be less tense, better resonance, and easier to sing. So it's easier to sing when you are not doing putting so much effort and moving around. Okay. So now I'm going to convert this into another exercise. We're going to go like this. Ma, ma, ma. No moving the jaw, except in the beginning. Ma. We're going to do two times. Ma, the third time, you're going to let go of your jaw and sing the same thing the third time. So, sounds like this. Ma, ma, ma. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, Shankar, give it, give it, give it a go. Okay. Ma. Ma, and then ma. So you didn't sound the same the third time. Yeah. So what happened? Uh, I felt like I had more control with my hands there. That's right. So the, the reason is that this forces your jaw to be in place, the right place. If you have it right. When you take your hands out, your jaw wants to move up automatically. And we don't want to allow that. So do it again. Put your hands here. And and one thing at the end of the the bottom of this, don't just drop the note like that. So you say ma, then and then immediately pick up ma. Okay, okay. right. Uh, ma, ma, ma. Ah, much better. Yeah. Okay, Karthik. Ma. Ma. Something changed. Okay, try again. Um, so make sure that nothing moves. Maybe just move your hands off an inch. Don't don't have to drop your hands. Ma. 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 There you go. Good job. Okay, Ramya. Ma, ma, ma. So actually, you sounded better with the hands off. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, uh, Anita. Oh, let me unmute. Yeah, you unmute. Okay. Ma, ma. Okay, okay, you're sounding very, I don't know whether it's a mic issue. Are you sitting up straight? Sit up yeah. straight, please. Don't, don't lean on the front. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So, uh, so we'll now build on this, make it more complicated. So we're going to, to sing this ma, but it's going to go like this now. Ma, ma, ma. Got it? Keep your hands still there. Don't let go of the hands. I just want you to give, do a more complicated thing again. Ma, ma. Now, the most important thing I want you to observe about yourself, so this is all about observing how your body is reacting to these exercises, is that nothing should change. If you see, if you find that uh, your, when you go to the next note, something is changing inside you, stop, drop down to the previous one. 
it is about training the body. It's like doing weights in a gym or anything like that. You don't go jump to the heaviest weight. You have to learn to do all the simple things and only progressively increase. So now I've added complexity to this exercise. So we have to recognize that it won't necessarily come on the first try. But that's okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, demonstrate again. Mo, 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 mo. Okay, so I want all these to look feel the same inside. Okay, so let's start with Ramya. Ma, ma, ma. Beautiful. So uh, the only thing is I somehow sense that at the very last note, somehow I see a change of the shape. Maybe, and that happens because sometimes when we are ending a phrase, we are in a hurry to finish. Okay. So don't be in a hurry, just you know, do it completely. So okay. do it again. Ma, ma, ma. Very nice. Arpana? Okay, one more time. I, I want to hear the ma every time. Ma, ma, ma. Very good. Okay, Anita. Ma, ma. Just make sure you relax, don't push the voice to go someplace it doesn't want to go. Okay, Arima? Some effort because, because you have to shape the lips somehow, right? Ah. So make sure you get the ah properly, not oh. Not ah. Because in, in Western classical music, a lot of people will sing ah. So, ah. You don't want that. You want, we are Indians. So you think ah. ah. So try doing this ah. Ah. Like Ma, ma. Sounded beautiful. Thank you. So remember this. Remember how it felt to sing that. And every song, every part of every song should sound feel like that. You never feel stressed. You never feel somehow that you are pushing your voice in some way. It doesn't want to go. Okay. Ma. So that last, uh, the ma when at the top sounded a little strange. So try again. Relax. Don't don't push it too hard. Ma ma 
Ma. Well, Allah, see you. See you doing this. Ma. Don't do that. Just, just gently go to that note. Ma. Nothing else should move. Ma. 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 Perfect. That's the third ma. Exactly how it should be sung. Yeah. Shankar. Ma. Slow, slow, slow. Ma. Ma. Excellent. One more time. Ma. 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 Very good. So the ma sound and the a sound, the they are two kind of um, prototypical sounds for us to make. The the ma because it uses the lips, and it kind of makes sure that the lips are properly shaped and helping the resonance rather than hurting it. So when you sing the ma, you should just touch and let go. Ma, 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 ma. Is that right? So keep that in mind. And the a of the basic. So the other uh, sound that is also just as basic is the na sound, the n. Right. The thing about n is, and so when I was learning Western music for the first time, I was not really learning Western music. I was singing Carnatic music in front of a Western coach. He didn't know anything about Carnatic music. So then he listened carefully to what I was singing. and he was only listening for two things pitch you know, i was hitting the pitches the right way the second was whether i was singing what was written on the page right so he he said you know what you you have given me and what you're singing don't seem to be the same is it no no i'm singing exactly the same thing then you asked me to sing one line and i sang it was kanche dalai dakshi you know that song He said, "I will. I don't hear that N sound in the in the first panjatalai dashi. So what I was doing was I was slurring. I was not really pronouncing that N properly. So that was my first uh, realization that every sound in our song has to be pronounced. Sometimes we think we have pronounced it, but we have kind of slurred over it. And so in our minds, we heard the sound, but nobody else did." and this is very very important when you're singing songs right that every single sound that is meant to be sung has to be heard so i went and asked once a, a speech therapist so my singing teacher says i'm slurring how should i fix that so she said okay say something say say something exactly say something okay no there no Say something more complicated. I didn't have anything, so she gave me a passage. She got a lot of her patients to read, I guess. So I read out this, and then she gave me this tip, which I'm giving you now. She said the ideal way to speak English, okay, it, it varies from language to language, of course. The ideal way to speak English is like a BBC news announcer. Really? What we make fun of BBC news announcer. It, what what is so great about a BBC news announcer? So apparently, much more than any other uh, radio or news network, if you want to become an announcer of the BBC, you have to go through some grueling uh, training to to speak the way BBC wants you to speak. So if you know, if you notice, a lot of them sound very very similar. So I said, okay, I don't care what. The BBC does. You tell me what is it that you're saying is right about the BBC announcer. So she told me this, right? Every sound has to be hit hard. Okay, let me repeat. Every sound has to be hit hard. You hear? Hear me say that? Every sound must be hit hard. So that means. It's as as opposed to every sound must be hit hard. See how the slurring happens? Our the when successive sounds merge together, they kind of fuse and become some third thing. 
and this is very bad for singing because all the uh, effort we are putting into say for example singing a ma properly or a na properly will be lost if you're not singing a ma so we have to do both things we have to learn how to sing those vowels and consonants properly but we should also voice those consonants when we sing it and not skip them so i'm going to teach you only a few of the consonants of course it's not possible to do all of them but the main ones that indians have trouble with i'm going to teach you uh, so m is the first one and the main mistake we make is that we don't close our mouth properly when we sing m so when you sing an m it has to be m mm. no no not not just sort of close almost close your mouth a lot of people will say ma not completely close your mouth and open again to so make sure your lips touch when you sing ma okay now to the end n is how mm. so the tongue has to touch the top of your the roof of your mouth mm. so we going to sing no 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 so i i'm going to, i'm using this hand because i found that using your hands actually makes you do the right things in heart it's some physical thing so i want you to try to try this use your hand too if you want no 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 so the in no, the end sound must be really sharp no no so when you sing kanjadalai dakshi to be kanjadalai dakshi not kanjadalai dakshi right when it's very okay so let's try now i'm going to give you the exercise no 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 okay got that you want me to do it again i'll do it. no you can try it yourself first no 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 okay okay who wants to go first okay are you man yeah mm. no no No. Okay. I hear some some confusion in there. No. You just wanted to no, not no. That's how you say no in English, but I don't want that English sound. I want no. Oh, I want the N. Oh, no, not no. Okay. All right. Try again. So you mean like no? Yes, no. N. Oh, that's it. Yeah. N. No, 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 like that. Just make sure you hit the end really hard. No, no, no. Arpana. No. 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 Okay. So, watch me carefully. When I say no, my mouth mouth really looks like an O. Okay? Like a circle. I want your mouth also to look like that. No. Not no. Right? There's a different. I want the O to sound like an O. So the thing that Bibi announces do they exaggerate every uh, consonant and vowel. So I want that. Yeah. No. Ah, and don't move. Once you no. move, it, oh, it stays all like that. Yeah. No. 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 You you're shaking your head. Don't no shaking head. Just say. No. 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 Okay. Very good. Sonia. No. 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 Very good. 
very good. I, I want a little sharper end. Again, just okay. make sure that you press the tongue on the roof of your mouth really hard. Okay. Hmm. No. 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 Okay. Anita. No. 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 Very good. Karthik. No. 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 Very good. Pinch the end a little bit more, please. No. 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 Okay, Shankar. No. 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 Beautiful. One more time. No. 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 Very good. So I got the basic. Um, two consonants and two vowels. Okay, we're going to hit the next big vowel. So we did R. Uncle, sorry. Um, will this help with voice crack? Everything with voice crack. What are we doing here? How the voice. So the most important thing that will help you with the voice crack is what we did on the first day, which is the belly breathing. So if your if your voice is what is called well supported, if you have enough air in your tank, in your belly, your voice is less likely to crack. Okay, so you should have faith; it will not crack on you. If it does crack, it will be you know temporary; it will go away. But the crack happens because the um, the air under your uh, vocal cords is not sufficiently you know pushing into your vocal cords sufficiently, so they sag and they give up. Right, that's why you, you you hear this kind of abrupt break in the voice, right? But there's a, there's also biology working in your case, right? Right. So the 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 size of the vocal cords has increased. They're still learning how to vibrate. So there's nothing you can do about that, but just sing through that. It's, it's okay, it's okay. Could we do the no like this? Mm, no. Tomorrow's exercises that right? okay. so when you do that, you have to make sure that in that entire passage your voice is relaxed. Okay. If you reach up into the stratosphere and your voice cannot go there in a strong and relaxed manner, you will not do that for anything. Okay. So, so we have to build it up gradually. That's why I'm not going too high or too low. So we will we'll build this foundation first, and then we we'll kind of add to the sides both. Lower and higher. Okay, did I get everybody? Yeah. Uh, okay, so the next vowel is the e sound. So the e is actually uh, not as simple as it looks. We all think that oh, what's there in an e, but singing an e is a very um, uh, uh, it's a hard thing because there is no consensus on how to say the e. I'll show you. So you can say e, you can say e, you can say e. They're all e, and different cultures say e differently. But you have to listen very carefully to say how they say e. And in America, we also add an e. Like if two e's, right? If somebody's called called Neil N E E L, it becomes Neil. Right? We add extra vowels to that sound. So we have to be careful when singing not to let that interfere with the singing. So we have to teach ourselves how to sing the E properly, and the E is the most forward placed vowel. Or R is in the back, or somewhere in the center. E and U are out there in the front. O is in the back. O is the kind of the dark sound, and, and E is a very bright sound. So we're going to go. So I have to teach you how to use, uh, how to say the E. So the the experts tell us the correct way to say the e is first you have to make sure that your jaws are about you know, this slight separation, not too much, 
not too little, definitely not touching. Okay, the lips have to pucker just a little bit, and you're going to go. E right, you may think that this is some trivial thing, but it makes all the difference when you're singing because a lot of our singing is when we hold the vowels, right? So when we hold a note, we're essentially holding a vowel. And so singing those vowels correctly, you make all the difference in the way you sing. So in fact, all of singing is just singing vowels, consonants just come in the way. So these vowels are very, very important to enunciate. So E goes like this, jaw just slightly apart, relaxed, you have to make that yawn sound uh, shape in the back. Remember yesterday when we were yawning, the, the feeling that we got would open the back of our throats, like that. And then, but this time we are not going to open our mouth, we're going to keep our mouth mostly closed with a slight distance. We are going to pucker our lips a little bit, like this. Mm -hmm. This is the most difficult vowel to teach because it's all the action is actually happening inside your mouth. So I can only describe to you what's happening inside. So you start with the yawn position, and close your mouth, pucker your lips, so why don't you guys try it? Open your mouth from the back using your yawn. You can yawn if you want, close your mouth, so that your jaw is closed but not touching, pucker your lips slightly and say E. E. Okay, so all this kind of elaborate ceremony is necessary to make the E form properly. This is, this is what I've learned all these years, that what you think you have taken for granted is not really that straightforward, right? So I want you guys to try. And so the exercise is going to be e, 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 e. Okay, again. E, 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 e. E, 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 e. Okay, and all the while, keep everything open in the back. Do not constrict anything, because only the front of your mouth has to constrict for the E. Okay, let's start. Okay, who shall we pick first? Okay, let's start with Anita this time. E. Okay, you sing it your pitch. <laughs> Beautiful, again. Pucker your lips a little bit more. Yeah, I can't see. I can't really see, but no. you want your lips to come forward a little bit. Okay. Do you feel a difference to your of yourself? Is the E sounding different? When you say puckering the lip, it's almost when I think of a pucker, it comes like a ooh. Like I would think ooh would have that pucker. For, for me, the E goes sideways, like a smile almost. So that is what we were trying to avoid. So what happens is when most people say E, they get E. When you sing the E like that, you yeah. actually obstruct all the sound that has to come out of your mouth. So we are trying to sing an E differently from the standard way you say cheese, right? You don't say cheese. That's what you do for a smile in a photograph. But that's not the way you sing E in singing. So to what? answer your question about the oo, oo, oo is like more, much more pronounced like this. Oo, right? this is oo. Right. I'm, not, I'm not saying that far. Just slightly pucker your lips okay. so that you don't spread. It's just a way of anti-spreading. You don't want your lips to go this way. You want to keep your lips like this. Yeah. Okay, let's try again. Perfect. Yeah, again. Yes. Very good. So, 
this is exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know, it's like this. So if you practice something, it works nine times out of ten when you're practicing. When you're performing, it will work one times out of ten. So what will happen is when you put this into a song, it will automatically degrade into the way you normally sing an E. So what will happen is it will go somewhere between this puckered and the spread E. So don't worry about it. You have to keep that consciously in the mind. That's it. Okay. Okay, Ramya. Good. Again. Okay, just make sure you're not no sort of jerking your uh, voice. Just go smoothly. Very good. Okay, Arpana. Again, don't shake your head, please. Very good. One more time. I want you to close it more. If you can say e. I don't want e. I want e. It's still a dental sound, but the teeth should be like half an inch apart. Maybe. E. Not, not, not e. What are you looking? Keys. Keys. So when you started out with keys, that's all. Don't spread it more than that. Keys. E. Key. Ah, there you go. To spread like okay, like that, or to make it hey, these are the things. I want it where in between. Just like when you say keys, the beginning of your when you say enunciate keys, remember that. Just that key. Don't shake your head, but otherwise it's okay. Vowels are, uh, you know, going from. Uh, I put the sequence from back to front, and and the way it goes is O A A E U. O A A E U. So, so we're going to mo me ma mi mu. Okay, so we have to learn all the vowels. So we put all these vowels together like this. So let's do the the vowels we have done. A, right? So this A is a very very interesting vowel for Indians. 
I've seen a wide variation of how A is said among Indians. Some of us say A, some of us say A, right? And, and especially North Indians say A a lot. Uh, South Indians tend to say, say, say very strictly A. It doesn't matter. I think for our purposes, the sound is A. And we're going to say A, like in the English, uh, E-H-A. So the, the, I'll give you the same exercise. A, A, A. So it's very close to E. That's why I'm doing it after E. It's a slight difference in the mouth and the feeling is the same. And the only difference is the way the mouth is shaped. Remember, that's the only difference in all these vowels. It's just a little bit of difference in the front of the mouth, the vowel sounds different. And then the other one is okay. So I'm going to give you the whole sequence now. So let's see. So, oh, Also very uh, important. You have to make sure that you exaggerate the O. The way you exaggerate the O, your your mouth should form a perfect circle in the front. Mm. Right. So make sure that you do that when you when you sing the O. Mm. So the the five vowels again. Oh. Let's try with Arpana. Start with Arpana. So first you start with E. O, no. O, A, A, E, U. O. O. So you're struggling at the lower note. You want to try a little higher? Vertical up, please. A little too dark. I want the E to sound more to your nose. Okay. E e e e e e 
Very good. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Got it. Okay, Arima. Oh, sequence o a r e q o See how it works. So we are going to put this together in a song line. Okay, don't worry; it's not some complicated song. And some of you might even have sung this before. I, I chose this line because it has the vowels in it. I'm not going to judge you on whether you keep your note properly, but whether you enunciate your vowels properly. So the, the emphasis here is on how you um, pronounce your vowels. So the, the line goes like this. Bajat Murali Murare Sundara Jamuna Kinare. So, so there are how many vowels here? There is an A, which I have not done yet. There is a, there is a big A and a small A, like there is an A and an A. Bajat Murali. Murare. Murare. Okay, let's just sing that much. Bajata Murare. Murare. Bajata Murali. Murare. I'm sorry, I'm on. It's okay, it's all right. Okay, so. Baja, so I, I want to hear all the vowels clearly, right? Bajata Murali Murare. Okay. Arpana, I'm sure you've sung this before. So. I have it actually, yeah. but. I thought you weren't part of that Carnatic Hill Harmony, no? You're not in there. I wasn't. I wasn't. This was a song taught to those kids. Uh, I yeah, I attend that yeah. work. Okay, go ahead. Bajata Murali Murare. Bajata Murali Murare. Okay, so when you sing this, you have to sing it the way the vowels that I just taught you. Okay. Bajata Murali Murare. Bajata Murali. So this is the thing that I'm saying. Indians do a lot. You sing ba jata. It's not a. A. Ba jata. Ba jata murali murare. 
bajat murali not murali murali bajat murali murare i want a clearly murare ha ah, re hold it murare ha ah, okay ramya bajat murali murare i want that mura to be really a ah, murare again bajat murali murare very good anika bajat murali murare everything was fine except the a uh, from the bajat yes again bajata murali murare very good one more time bajata murali murare ariman bajata murali murare yeah i want a proper a from No, how we just practiced from the mama mama, bajata, bajata murali. What is not bajata? Bajata, bajata murali murare. Bajata, is it bajata? So don't relax your your voice. Bajata. bajat murali murare okay what careful attention to how you singing bajat 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 it's the same vowel a a bajat 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 no it's bajat bajat murali murare so you are not fully initiating you are you are like going three quarters of the way and stopping murare murare ha ah, mura mura ha ah, ha ah. ha ah, murare murare bajata murali murare bajata murali murare bajata is fine bajata murali e murare bajata murali murare i want you to do the the pakring like i told you murali murare bajat murali murare every song you sing you have to pay this much attention to every word you singing in that song you need to pay attention to the big words or the main words or the beginning and the end everything everything comes everything matters Okay, next line is Sundara Jamuna ki nare. Sorry, man. Sundara Jamuna ki nare. Sundara. Sorry, man. You're you're muted. सुंदर 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 जमुना जमुना मुरारे 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 मीनारे मीनारे 
Minari. Minari. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Sundara Jamuna. There is some sound. Raj, there is some sound. I don't know if others are hearing it, but when Aryaman sings, there is some background static sound. So he may not be able to hear what you're saying, I think. Some, I can hear that sound. I don't know if anyone else can hear that background static sound. Yeah, yeah we are hearing that static. Okay. Kinare. K I N A R E. Kinare. Sorry, Anitaji. This is a really old computer, so it has a lot of hardware. Don't worry about it. It's okay. We all deal with technology. It's all right. Just, just keep going. Kinare. No worries. I was just telling Uncle so that you, if, because you were not able to hear, I think, what you were saying. So that's why I said, yeah. Thank you. Kinare. K I N A R E. Kinare. Kinare. Sundara Jamuna Kinare Sundara Sundara Jamuna Kinare Sundara Jamuna Kinare Sundara Jamuna Kinare Very good, one more time. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Javash. Okay. Ramya? Sundara Jamuna Kinare. It's okay. Uh, again, one more time. Let me hear it. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. So almost perfect. The the I want it slightly more open. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Okay. Nita. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Okay. One more time. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Perfect. So, so you have to understand that in order to sing in a relaxed manner, you have to refashion your vowels because this will allow your. Uh, so, the way, the reason these vowels have to be sung like this is because it minimizes the effort you have to put into singing the song. So, that the minimum movement in your jaw, your tongue, the rest of your face to sing the line. So these vowels have to be sung like this so it becomes easy, yeah? So I have a question then. So this is a more uh, Hindustani type of or North Indian song. So does it matter whether it's uh, South Indian or Carnatic or uh, Hindustani? This sounds like, so it's a, it's a trick song. Um, this is actually a Carnatic song. It is okay. set in a, in a, a North Indian rag, yeah. actually a Carnatic song. This is a South Indian song. Right, right. Sung, being sung in a North Indian rag, I guess. Right. right. Simplifying it so that it's uh, uh, so in, in in Carnatic music, it's sing it a little bit more shake. Mm. So. Mm. Then it suddenly sound Carnatic, but then I have to separate out all the components. That's why I'm splitting it like that. So one question related to that, is it in both, uh, when you're singing any ragas, which are like more North Indian or South Indian, is the emphasis on the vowel still important regardless? Okay. I'm teaching you the vowel pronunciation that is to be used anywhere. Okay. Universal. It's not something that, this, this is not meant to be, so you can add an accent or effect, but in my mind, this is the simplest way to sing these things. That gives, brings out all the resonance in your, in your mouth. Okay. So what happens in reality is that we, because we have learned it from our gurus, we use a pronunciation that actually does not help us. 
like for example, Murali, when we sing a, uh, the a uh sound is the least, the, the most obstructed sound in our palate. So we should try and minimize use of the a uh sound. So Murali, so the a uh kind of sinks into your voice, and then up again when you get to the lee. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you, if you sing it Murali, when A ah comes out, then it sounds more resonant and it's also actually more relaxed because then you don't have to move your mouth as much. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's, these are just the things. But yeah, so there is no uh, thing like, oh, this is how you pronounce one language or another language while singing. This is the universal vowel uh, pronunciation that I have found. Of course, people might argue with it. But you can add stuff to it. But you should know what is optimal and what is being changed to suit the style. Okay, so we are almost out of time. So let's see. Um, the, 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 the line after this is a little bit uh, complicated. So I will pick a different line, um, which has a different... Um, since we are, we are focusing on the er uh sound, I'll pick another line that has the earth uh, uh, vowels a lot in this song. Deva Brinda Pada Mukunda. Yeah. Deva Brinda Pada Mukunda. Yeah. Deva. So this now it has an A sound, right? Deva Brinda Pada. Yeah, so it has the U sound. Deva, Deva Brinda. Oh, I'm, on, I'm live. Okay. <laughs> Deva Brinda Pada Mukunda. This Pada. Pada Mukunda. Deva Brinda Pada Mukunda. Deva Brinda Pada Mukunda Deva Brinda Pada is it father or father? Father. Father Mukunda. Deva Brinda. Father Mukunda. You think it's perfect? I want the A to be really exaggerated. Deva Brinda. Deva Brinda. Father Mukunda. Okay. Are you one? Deva Brinda. Padamukunda. Very good. The Pada said, make sure you verticalize it a little bit more. Pada. Make it relaxed. So don't, don't clench your jaw. Deva Brinda Padamukunda. Deva Brinda Padamukunda. Again. Deva Brinda Pada Mukunda Deva Brinda Pada Mukunda so, I'll, 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 To finish off, I'll go to a difficult part. So if you can get it fine, it's kind of aspirational. Gopi Kacha Kora Chanda To the O sound. Gopika Chapora Chanda Gopika Chapora Chanda I want that O to sound like you're really calling somebody, right? Gopika Chapora Chanda Who wants to go first? Okay, Ramya. Gopika Chakora Chanda. Perfect. Again. Okay. 
Gopika-cha-kora-chanda. So the only thing I would nitpick is the Gopika, when you, when you, the, the short E, don't lose it. Still pay attention to how you pronounce the E. Okay. Gopika. Okay. Gopika. Ah, yeah. Gopika-cha-kora-chanda. Don't bite the chanda. Chanda. So let the A come out first and then the E. Gopika Chakora Chanda. So, ch Chanda. So, you're, it's okay, it's almost there. You're, you're almost attaching the in immediately Chanda. So, Chanda. So, this is a good thing. Gopika Chakora chan, chan. Sorry, go pika chakora chanda. Ah, again, again. Go pika chakora chanda. Ah, very good, perfect. Okay, Arjuna. Go pika chakora chanda. Again. Gopika Chakora Chanda. Good. So just the same I told Ramya. The Chanda is not, don't jump to the Inda right away. Ch let stay on the earth and then Inda. Chanda. Chanda. Ah, again, sing now. Gopika Chakora Chanda. Chanda, not Chanda. 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 Ah, Arima? Go, go, pika, chanda. Closing your mouth when you're singing. That, that's not allowed. So when you say, go, pika. I want to hear that. Ah. Go pika chadora chanda. Again. So, go pika chadora chanda. Go pika chadora chanda. Go pika chadora chanda. Now, when you have your hands on your cheeks, you sing perfectly. Go pika chagore chanda. Go pika chagore chanda. What is Ariman? Go pika chagore chanda. Very good. Again. Very good. So again, same thing. Don't 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 be in a hurry to end the in the chanda. Go go pika chakorachanda. So this is an example of how singing and speaking differ. So if you were talking, if you were saying go pika chakor chanda. That's you actually right. hit that, that, that emphasis will be there. But that's not the same when you're singing because you have to, you know, sing it in the meter of the song. So you have to keep your control. You should not be a slave to how you speak, but you, know, you deliberately choose to elongate or shorten the vowel. Okay, so we are over time. So I'm going to give you an exercise for um, uh, today's practice that I don't know what you will do, but uh, I want you to practice this at home. Right? It's a very simple thing. So it's the English phrase, hi, how are you? I am well, thank you. Okay? So, hi, how are you? I am well, thank you. Right? So to make sure you pronounce all the sounds in this sentence. The sentences. Hi, how are you? 
I am well. Thank you. Every sound that is written there must be sounded. So I want you to practice it. Then tomorrow I'll make you recite this line and see how much uh, you have learned from today's class. So I have a question about the yesterday's uh, the Sare Gama Pa that you had sent out, right? Extra yeah. credit kind of thing. I'd like to try that out because I want. I don't think we got a chance to try that out. But uh, maybe you know if. Everybody else is fine with it. If you're okay, I'd like to be able to try that out to see how that sounds. I don't have that exercise in front of me. But I have to pull it up to myself. One minute. Give me one minute. Uh, Okay, I think I have it here. Oh no, this is not the one. Uh, I did have it open, in fact. I thought it was in a... It was an email. Is that yeah. right? I have a lot of emails open. Give me just a moment. Oh, these are not the emails. Be right up front here. Ah, yes, it is the notes. Okay, yes, I see it here. So this was the one where you sing six above with the pattern of Sare Gamma Pa. Right? Tell me, the number. Tell me the number of the exercise. Four, five, six. No, this is this. This is called this. You have put as the extra credit exercise at the bottom. Extra credit. Okay. Right. Right. It is singing, yeah. Uh, yeah. sing exercise six above. Mm. Yes. Use that with the pattern of yes. Tari so, Gama Pa, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing I want to just be able, I, I want to be sure that this is how you're thinking this will go, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Okay. Mm. Is that the way? And then you go each yeah, level yeah. higher. Yeah, one higher yeah. I'm sorry? One, one note higher now, yes. Right. So if I start with, uh, and I have to start kind of lower because this will keep progressing, right? Uh, that's so, why I said, don't go too far. Just go as far as you can comfortably. Right. Okay. So let me, uh, if you don't mind, do you have a minute? A few minutes or one minute? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. That the sound that really comes out of your nose. Yeah. Okay. So it's all about that doing that in with control so that mm -hmm. you can do it at various pitches. Okay. okay. I just wanted to make sure I'm on the right no, track no, at least. No, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, requests? Okay. So tomorrow we will talk about. Range, all important range question. How to increase your range, how to sing high, how to sing low, how to sing loudly, how to sing softly. Uh, and then do that without straining your voice. Mm -hmm. right? So that will be, I think, a much requested uh, thing on the first day. A lot of people ask for that. So we'll do that. Yes, especially I think because uh, many of the kids are actually practicing since you're learning Karnatic, you're doing. So much more practice, you know, when you're learning. Day after day. You know, there is this, this proverb that says, practice makes perfect. It's not true in music. Bad practice will ruin you. Mm -hmm. So good practice makes perfect. Absolutely. That's true. Yes. Okay. 
So that's all for today. Thank you. See you tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow afternoon, 2.30. Thank, Thank you, sir. Namaskaram. Thank you so much, sir. Hi, Ramina. You're back. I don't yeah. know if you were talking No, I was here. I was listening today. Uh, I was not uh, turning on my video, but it was a very great session. Thank you. I'll uh, share the recording soon. I just posted last uh, yesterday's recording. Okay. Okay. Thank you.